Welcome to The Deep Dive, your shortcut to staying well-informed in the fast-moving world of AI research. You know that feeling, right? It's like every other week, there's a groundbreaking new model, a revolutionary paper. Trying to keep pace can feel like drinking from a fire hose, uh, especially if you're an AI researcher or ML engineer trying to implement these solutions. And if you're actually building agents, the constant expensive headache of training and fine-tuning large language models is just a massive hurdle. Today, we're doing a special deep dive that's perfect for our AI Paper Podcast series, focusing on a brilliant paper that tackles this exact challenge head-on. We're talking about Memento, fine-tuning LLM agents without fine-tuning LLMs, a collaboration from UCL and Huawei Noah's Ark Lab. The core innovation here is uh, nothing short of brilliant. It's a novel learning paradigm. It allows LLM agents to continually adapt and improve without that prohibitively expensive process of fine-tuning the underlying LLMs themselves. How do they pull this off? Well, it's all thanks to a memory-based online reinforcement learning approach, drawing direct inspiration from how you know, human memory works. And the results are genuinely impressive. Memento achieved top one on GAIA validation. It significantly outperformed state-of-the-art training-based methods on the Deep Researcher dataset and showed substantial gains on out-of-distribution tasks, all while being remarkably efficient. For you, the listener, this isn't just an academic breakthrough. It's a practical pathway. Think scalable, efficient, generalist LLM agents capable of real-time learning in complex scenarios like deep research. It's truly a game changer for agent development. It absolutely is. And when we zoom out to the broader context of LLM agents today, we're often presented with a difficult choice, right? You either have these rigid, static agents, fantastic for a very specific task, maybe, but completely unable to adapt to anything new. Or the alternative is agents that rely on computationally intensive fine tuning, which, as you said, is simply not sustainable for continuous real time learning in dynamic environments. Memento completely redefines this by offering a way for agents to learn and evolve continuously without those costly high resource gradient updates to the base LLM. It sort of bypasses that core dilemma. Okay, so if those rigid static agents are kind of a dead end for adaptability and fine tuning is so resource intensive, what are the biggest trade-offs or remaining challenges with existing paradigms that Memento specifically aims to overcome? That's a great question, and it really hits at the heart of the problem. Many current LLM agents are, well, to put it simply, fixed frameworks. Imagine a beautifully crafted, pre-programmed robot designed for one specific job. It'll perform that job perfectly, sure, but ask it to do anything outside its precise, fixed workflow, and it's utterly lost. They are static once deployed. They just can't learn, can't adapt. And the fine-tuning approach, while offering maybe more flexibility, comes with its own set of serious challenges, right? Yeah. Beyond just the cost. Indeed. Fine-tuning an LLM means modifying its core parameters, which, yeah, demands immense compute power and time. And there's the significant risk of what's called catastrophic forgetting. You teach it something new, and it might just overwrite or forget something crucial it learned previously. Ouch. Yeah, it's like having to retrain an entire human brain from scratch just to learn a new skill. It's incredibly inefficient for scenarios where continuous incremental learning is essential, Memento's human-inspired approach is really designed to circumvent these fundamental limitations. So it, Memento proposes a fundamentally different human-inspired approach. Yeah. How does it manage to learn and adapt without touching the base LMM itself? That's the core idea. Exactly. The paper proposes a memory-based learning framework that's deeply inspired by how humans learn from experience. Think about it. We encode specific events or um, episodic traces we distill general rules from them, selectively reinforce what works, and most importantly, we recall and adapt past solutions when we face near similar problems. Memento mimics this by using a sophisticated external memory system. That sounds incredibly like case-based reasoning or CBR. Is that the psychological principle guiding Memento's design? It is, absolutely. Case-based reasoning is a well-established cognitive strategy where you solve new problems by retrieving and adapting solutions from similar past experiences. And crucially, that includes both successes and failures. Right, learning what not to do. Precisely. What makes Memento unique is that it implements CBR without ever modifying the base LLM's parameters. The learning happens outside the foundational model in this dynamic external memory. That's its efficiency secret, really. That's where it truly gets fascinating because it suggests a non-parametric, learn-on-the-fly framework. Yeah. You mentioned an external memory, but how is this organized? What does Memento's actual architecture look like? Okay, let's unpack this. Imagine Memento's architecture as a highly skilled, constantly learning research team. 
At the helm, you have the lead researcher, the planner. This researcher is brilliant, but relies heavily on experience. Okay. Then they have an incredibly capable assistant, the tool enabled executor who can wield a vast array of digital tools. Think of this as the hands. And both of them have access to a meticulously organized, ever growing archive of past projects, insights, lessons learned. That's the growing case bank or episodic memory. So the planner is the brain, the executor in the hands and the case bank, the accumulated wisdom. What kind of LLM powers this planner? Is it something special? The planner is an LLM driven CBR agent. They used a powerful model like GPT 4.1 in the paper. Its job is to receive a task, then intelligently query its case memory for relevant past experiences, remembering successes and failures, like we said. Based on these retrieved insights, it generates a comprehensive plan. The tool-enabled executor, often using models like O4 Mini or O3 for the GAIA tasks they tested, is a general-purpose LLM that then executes each step of that plan. Right. And it's not just a simple tool caller. It supports rich reasoning and flexible tool composition using what they call a model context protocol. And this model context protocol, what does that mean in practical terms for the executor? How does it help? Ah, uh, good question. Think of the model context protocol, or MCP, as like a standardized language or API. It's how the LLM agent can talk to and control external software tools, much like, you know, your operating system lets different applications work together seamlessly. It gives the executor the power to not just call a tool, but to understand its capabilities, format inputs correctly, and interpret outputs intelligently. Mm. This is really crucial for dynamic on-the-fly tool integration. And the growing case bank, the heart of the learning system, is where all those experiences are logged. How does this memory actually store and more importantly, learn from past events. Right, this is where the continuous adaptation happens. The case bank stores complete trajectories. The initial task, the actions taken, and the ultimate reward or success outcome. The beauty is in its duality. It has a non-parametric case memory, which is pretty straightforward. It just appends new experiences and retrieves similar past ones based on semantic similarity, like finding an old email with keywords, maybe. Okay, simple retrieval. But then there's the parametric case memory. This is where the real intelligence kicks in. It actively learns which past cases were most helpful and successful using a learned Q function. Think of it like a human learning from their best and maybe worst experiences over time. It then prioritizes retrieving those high utility cases to optimize for future success. This is how Memento continuously improves its decision making based on its own history. That distinction is key, not just recalling similar stuff, but intelligently prioritizing the useful stuff. Are there other types of memory Memento uses to keep everything coordinated? Yes, exactly. To facilitate smooth operation between the planner and executor, there's also a subtask memory. This is essentially a text-based log for active subtask and their results, making sure the team stays on track during a complex task. Like a scratch pad. Kind of, yeah. And a tool memory maintains text-based logs of all tool interactions for each subtask providing a clear record of what tools were used, when, and what happened. So Memento's executor has this vast digital toolbox at its disposal. It's not just relying on the LLM's internal knowledge, it's actively reaching out and engaging with the digital world. What kind of tools are we talking about here? And this isn't merely a list of tools, it's more like a meticulously crafted arsenal. It allows Memento to actively synthesize information from disparate sources. That's a critical leap beyond static LLMs, making it truly capable of deep research rather than just, you know, data retrieval. It can literally read, see, and hear the internet. For information acquisition, it has a sophisticated search toolkit using a Surex aggregator, pulling from multiple engines like Google, Bring, DuckDuckGo, Brave. And when a deeper understanding is needed, it uses Crawl4AI to fetch and parse full web content, not just snippets. That's a crucial differentiator right there, going beyond snippets to full web content. What about handling all the different kinds of information you encounter online, images, videos? That's where its multimodal heterogeneous information processing capabilities come in. It uses vision language models for image captioning and video summaries. It uses automated speech recognition for audio transcription. And it has a highly sophisticated document parsing toolkit. Okay. And this isn't just for PDFs. We're talking PowerPoints, spreadsheets, archives, plain text, code, JSON, XML, Word documents, pretty much any file type you can throw at it. And then to actually make sense of all that data and perform computations, it has reasoning tools too. Indeed. For reasoning, it includes a powerful code tool. This provides a sandboxed environment for executing Python code, shell commands, even creating files, all within a secure whitelist. 
That sounds incredibly useful. Oh yeah, it's invaluable for data analysis or generating dynamic scripts, and of course a basic math tool for arithmetic operations. So Memento's executor isn't just looking at text, it's like having a team of specialized digital assistants who can see images, hear audio, and read and understand virtually any document format, all feeding into its reasoning process. And importantly, it learns from every single one of those interactions via the case bank. All this sophisticated architecture sounds incredibly promising in theory, but as always, the real question is, how did Memento perform when put to the test? What benchmarks did they use to truly stress test its capabilities? Right, the proof is in the pudding. They put Memento through a really rigorous evaluation using four key benchmarks designed to challenge LLM agents in different ways. GAIA, for instance, tests long horizon planning and complex tool use. Tasks range from simple, maybe five-step problems to multi-tool challenges involving up to 50 steps. 50 steps, wow. Yeah, complex stuff. Then Deep Researcher focuses on real-time web research, evidence retrieval, and multi-hop reasoning across various open domain QA datasets. Simple QA assesses factual precision and robustness against hallucination, which is always important. And perhaps most ambitiously, humanity's last exam, HLE, which probes complex reasoning in long tail specialized academic domains. So these benchmarks together provide a very comprehensive picture of its abilities. And the results are genuinely impressive from what I read. Tell us about the standout achievements that make this paper such a potential breakthrough. On GAIA, Memento didn't just perform well, it achieved top one on the validation set with an 87.88% pass at three, and a very strong 79.4% on the private test leaderboard. It outperformed leading frameworks like Manus, AWorld, and AWL. Okay, that's strong. But here's where it gets truly remarkable. For Deep Researcher, it delivered 66.6% .6 F1 and 80.4% per PM, which actually outperformed state-of-the-art training-based systems. Wait, systems that were fine-tuned. Exactly. This vividly demonstrates that Memento's real-time online tools and its learning approach can surpass agents relying solely on static, pre-trained databases. On simple TUA, it hit 95.0% accuracy, the highest among all baselines they compared against, showing excellent factual reliability and a strong defense against hallucination. And I heard it even held its own against the best of the best, like GPT-5, on humanity's last exam. That's a bold claim for an agent not fine-tuning its base LLM. It's true and quite stunning. On HLE, Memento scored 24.4% PM, ranking second overall, just 0.92 points behind GPT-5, and impressively, it was ahead of Gemini 2.5 Pro. Wow. This really highlights the sheer power and generalization capability of its case-based reasoning, particularly in these very specialized expert domains where maybe conventional tool usage alone might falter. This is serious proof that dynamic memory-based learning can compete with, and sometimes even surpass, the largest, most expensively trained models out there. It's one thing to perform well out of the box, but the core promise of Memento is its ability to learn continually. Did they show concrete evidence of this continual learning in action? Absolutely, they did. The study meticulously tracked Memento's performance on deep researcher over five learning iterations, and they observed consistent improvement, which is tangible proof of the benefits of accumulating cases in its case bank. Both the parametric and non-parametric CBR mechanisms were critical for these gains. So it actually got better over time by itself. Yes. And even more compellingly, Memento showed substantial improvements. We're talking between 4.7% and 9.6% absolute gains on out-of-distribution datasets like Music, Bamboogle, and PopQA. This concerns it effectively generalizes its learned experiences to unseen novel tasks, which is, you know, the holy grail for adaptive agents. They also conducted ablation studies, right? Uh -huh. Really peel back the layers and understand which components were truly driving these improvements. What were the most insightful findings from that? Yeah, the ablations were very illuminating. First, integrating live tools significantly reduced hallucination and boosted performance compared to an offline executor. No surprise there, but good confirmation. Right, access to real-time info helps. Definitely. Second, explicit planning, even without the case-based reasoning, yielded robust gains. This confirms that having a structured approach is better than just pure improvisation by the executor. But here's the kicker. Case-based reasoning provided consistent additive improvements on top of both planning and tools. Ah, so it's not redundant. Not at all. It truly elevates the agent's capabilities beyond just having smart tools and a plan. It adds that layer of learned experience. Oh, and interestingly, they also found a sweet spot for the number of retrieved cases. 
K4 retrieving four pass cases was optimal. Only four. Yep. Retrieving more cases didn't necessarily mean better performance. It suggests that quality and relevance over sheer quantity are crucial in memory curation. Smart retrieval matters more than just having a massive unsheltered memory dump. So it's not just about having a big memory, but a smart, expertly curated one. Okay, now let's go behind the scenes a bit and talk about efficiency and how Memento actually behaves operationally. What's fascinating here is how its tool usage patterns change as tasks become more difficult. Right, what's fascinating here is that as tasks escalate in difficulty, for example, moving from level one to level three on GAIA, the usage of essential tools like code execution, search, and web crawling dramatically increases. This is a clear indicator that for complex real-world problems, agents absolutely need robust access to external information and computation. You can't just reason your way through everything. Makes sense. However, for the most challenging problems, the model shifts its reliance more towards its internal reasoning capabilities. It focuses more on interpreting and aggregating evidence from those tool outputs rather than just calling more and more tools indiscriminately. So it gets smarter about synthesis. Exactly. This tells us that while tools are indispensable, they're only as effective as the agent's ability to plan, integrate, and synthesize the information they provide. It's not about brute force tool calling, but intelligent synthesis and aggregation. That makes a lot of sense. It's not just about execution, but deep understanding. And what about token costs? That's always a big concern for LLM usage in production environments. Token costs are definitely a critical factor for anyone building these things. The study revealed that average input tokens skyrocket with task difficulty. It went from around 26,000 for level one tasks to a staggering 121,000 for level three on GAIA. Whoa, 121K input tokens. Yeah, that's huge. This is primarily because more detailed observations, complex plans, extensive tool outputs, and intricate intermediate reasoning steps need to be incorporated into the prompts as the problem gets harder. You need that context. Yeah. However, what's a clever design choice and key for efficiency is that the average output tokens remain relatively stable across difficulty levels. Because the final answers are typically concise, Memento avoids unnecessary verbosity in its final output, which is a significant practical gain for cost and usability. That's a clever design for controlling costs, focusing the complexity on the input side. And there was a particularly interesting finding about fast versus slow thinking when comparing different planner models. I'd assume more deliberation would lead to better results, so what did they find? Yeah, this insight is really quite important for how we think about building modular LLM systems. The paper compared planners like GPT-4.1, which they characterized as fast or non-deliberative, with some slower, potentially more deliberative options. Surprisingly, the fast, non-deliberative planner, GPT-4.1, consistently outperformed the slower ones. That's counterintuitive. Why would a faster, less deliberative planner be more effective in such complex scenarios? What was going on? Well, if we connect this to the bigger picture of cognitive architectures, it seems that the slower planners sometimes uh, skipped explicit planning altogether. Or worse, they generated overly verbose and confusing plans. Mm, too much noise. Kind of. These confusing plans actually hampered the executor's ability to act effectively. In contrast, the fast planners provided concise, structured plans and effectively decomposed problems into manageable subtasks. This led to better downstream execution. So it suggests that for these modular LLM systems, clear, structured, and concise planning is superior to overly complex deliberation. Interesting. Overly complex planning might inadvertently introduce role confusion between the planner and the executor. So efficiency and clarity in planning, not just sheer verbosity or deliberation time, seems to be a crucial ingredient for success here. This deep dive into Memento has been incredibly insightful. It truly presents a compelling vision for the future of LLM agents, doesn't it? Continuously adaptive, highly capable, and significantly more efficient by completely sidestepping that expensive LLM fine-tuning process. It clearly demonstrates how memory-based online reinforcement learning and case-based reasoning can unlock new levels of performance, especially in complex, deep research tasks. It's a significant leap forward, absolutely. It showcases how continuous learning can be achieved without fundamentally altering the base model. This approach promises a future of highly adaptable agents that can, you know, actually thrive in dynamic real world scenarios without breaking the bank on compute. Which really raises an important question for all of us in AI research, I think. As agents become more sophisticated in learning from their own experiences like Memento does, and as we rely less on baking in all knowledge through massive static model updates, how might the very nature of LLM development shift? 
could we be moving towards building more effective cognitive architectures rather than just bigger and bigger pre-trained models? What implications does this have for the future of general intelligence and AI and how we approach designing truly intelligent agents? Something to ponder until our next deep dive.